I recently ran a poll on the community tab to see how many of you are interested in Next.js projects and over a third of you are. So I thought it was time to start making videos on animations using Next.js as well, not just vanilla JavaScript. In today's video, we'll use Next.js to create this cool music player animation I found on one of the awards featured websites. The text animates in a loop and some of you have asked about making this kind of text animation before in our discord server as well. So I tried recreating it using SVG and GSAP's motion path plugin and I'm gonna show you how you can too create the same animation for your next project. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. You can also find the source code through the pro membership via the link in the description. Now let's start by setting up a fresh app. Since I've already got a folder on my desktop, let's start by using npx create next app to set up a fresh project. For this project, we'll stick to writing JSX which I'm more comfortable with instead of TypeScript. Once the setup is done, I'll run the development server to get things going. First, let's clean up all the boilerplate CSS so we can start fresh. I'll delete everything from the CSS module file and the global CSS file as well. I'll also clear the page content and just have an H1 for now. Next, we'll install GSAP which we'll later need to animate text along the SVG path. Once that's installed, I'll add the assets to the public folder. We'll have two images, a disk PNG and a basic image for the cover art. Now let's get to creating the actual elements. We'll keep the project structure simple by adding a folder for components. Inside the components folder, I'll create another folder called vinyl prayer animation. In this folder, I'll add a JSX file and that's all we need for now. Now first of all, I'll add the use client directive at the top of the file before any imports because by default, all components on Next.js 13 inside the app folder are server components and the server components cannot use client features such as use state, use effect, etc. But we are going to use those. Next, I'll import the necessary modules including image and the hooks. I'll also import the disk image and set up GSAP including the motion path plugin. Finally, let's create the vinyl cover animation component which we'll be working on next. Let's return the JSX structure for our animation. We are first creating a container div which will hold all our SVG elements in the vinyl disk image. Inside the container, we start by adding an SVG element. This SVG will display the primary animated text. We define the SVG's width, height and view box to ensure it scales correctly across different screen sizes. We use a definition element within the SVG to define reusable components. Here, we are defining a path with ID definition1 which we will reference later for the text animation. Next, we define the actual path with the ID path1. This path determines the trajectory along which our text will animate. It's a code path defined by the coordinates in the D attribute. Now you might be wondering where these path values come from. Let me tell you that I found a handy online tool that lets you create custom paths and see the coordinates update in real time. What I did was take a screenshot of the original animation and use that tool to trace the path, capturing the exact same curve. You might need to tweak the scale and positioning of the curve a bit to match your SVG's width and height, but this tool makes it easy to get the path just right. We then add a text element that holds the text we want to animate. When adding the text, we are using text primary, text secondary and the cover image. Inside this particular SVG element, we map over text primary and create multiple text path elements. The text path uses the path we defined earlier by referencing it using xlink href property. The start offset attribute controls where along the path the text begins, allowing us to create a looping effect. Next, we add another SVG for the secondary text. This follows a similar structure with a different path and text.
The text anchor and dominant baseline attributes are used to align the text properly along the path, ensuring it follows the desired curve. Finally, we add a disc div containing the vinyl disc image and the album cover. For that, we'll just use the image component from Next Library to handle image optimization and loading. This setup defines the visual structure of our animation, with paths controlling the movement of the text and the SVG elements creating the overall layout. Before we dive into styling, let's add the component to our page so we can see how it looks. We'll start by importing the vinyl cover animation component and the sample cover image into our home component. In the home function, we'll return the vinyl player animation component inside a React fragment. We are passing three props to the component, text primary, text secondary and cover image. For the text primary, we have an array with three instances of the text. This will animate along the primary path. We'll also pass in the secondary text prop with some other placeholder text, which will animate along the secondary path. Lastly, we pass the cover image, the sample cover image, which will be displayed as the album cover. With this setup, we can now see the component rendered on the page, making it easier to fine tune the styles and animations next. Now let's get to styling. To keep things simple, we'll use the global CSS file to handle all the styles, but feel free to organize your styles however you prefer. We remove the default margins and padding and set box sizing to border box. For the HTML and body, we apply a black background color. Next, the container is set to take up the full width and height of the viewport. We then set overflow to hidden to prevent any content from spilling outside the container and position to relative to allow for absolutely positioned children. For images, we ensure they cover that container fully by setting the width and height to 100% and using object fit cover to maintain the aspect ratio. The SVG elements are positioned absolutely at the center of the container using top, left and transform properties. We also set overflow visible to allow the content inside the SVG to extend beyond its bounds. For path elements, we set fill transparent since we only need the stroke to define the text path. In the text path elements, we use white for the fill color, making the text stand out against the dark background. The same fill color is applied to the text elements and we use text transform uppercase to capitalize all the text. We then customize the font styles for the text elements. The primary text uses the Tusker Gross Tech font with a size of 46 pixels, while the secondary text ID uses the new Montreal font with 20 pixels. The disk is styled to center the disk image in the container with a width and height of 550 pixels. We use border radius to 100% to make it perfect circle and position absolute to place it in the middle. Finally, the cover image styles the album cover image, positioning it at the center of the disk. It's smaller at 250 pixels by 250 pixels and also has border radius 100% for a circular shape. We use overflow hidden to ensure that any content outside the cover's image boundaries is clipped. With these styles in place, our animation will have the desired look and feel ready for next steps. Now let's move on to the animation logic using GSAP. First, we create a container reference using useRef. This will allow us to target the entire animation container later on. In the use effect hook, we copy the path data from the visible paths to their corresponding definitions. We do this by selecting the paths using get element by id and setting the data attribute of the definitions to match the actual paths. This step ensures that the text follows the correct path during the animation. Next, the use this app hook to define our animations. Now the entire animation is scoped to the container reference ensuring all animations are applied within the designated area. Inside this hook, we create a function called animate text that animates the text along the path. It takes two parameters, the selector to target the text and a delay to stagger the animations. The animate text function uses two functions to animate the start offset attribute of each text path element. The text moves along the path from the start to the end, creating a looping effect. The duration is set to 6 seconds and the animation repeats infinitely with a linear easing. 
We then call animate text three times for the three instances of the primary text, each with a different delay to stagger their movement. Finally, we animate the rotation of the disk using the two function again. The disk rotates 360 degrees continuously with a two second duration and a linear easing. Finally, we attach this reference to our container div. This step is crucial because it links the container element in the DOM with our GSAP animations. With this code, our text and disk animations come to life, creating the dynamic visual effect we are aiming for. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.